So welcome to our fourth lecture on solid state structures. We looked at simple packing of spheres, which is fine for the elements. And we said most of the metals fit neatly into our categories of either being cubic closest packed or hexagonal closest packed, with some exceptions being body-centered cubes, which are also very efficient packing. On the other hand, there are only 118 of the elements. There are millions of compounds. What do we see from the millions of compounds? Well, we've already gone through the molecules where the covalent bonding is holding the molecules together. And we've seen what structures and organizations we get out of that, which leaves us the ionic compounds. And what kind of structures are we going to get when we have ions forming? the lattice. So what kind of structure do we get when we bring ions together? Well, the basic of objective of every cation is to surround itself with negative charge. And so as far as the cations were con be concerned, if they could just totally surround themselves with anions, 6, 8, 10, 12, whatever it could get around it, that would be fine as far as the cation was concerned. In the same way, the anions want to surround themselves with as much positive charge as they possibly can. So the anions would like to be surrounded by 6, 8, 10, 12 cations, whatever number they could get around them. It should be fairly obvious, however, that those two possibilities are mutually exclusive. The cations can then and not end up totally surrounding themselves with anions, while the anions are totally surrounding themselves with cations. So what does actually happen when we bring cations and anions together? Well, what happens is we get a compromise. We get this kind of alternating cation-anion structures in the crystal as each of the cations and anions get some of the opposite ions around them as their closest neighbors, but then those ions have another cation, another spot over. So what do we actually get for crystal structures of cations and anions? The simplest ionic compounds, of course, include one cation and one anion in their formulas. And so what's the best arrangement possible? given one cation and one anion. In a structure where you have one cation for each anion, the best packing you can get is the simple cube with the opposite ion in the center. In this arrangement, the center ion has eight of the opposite ions around it. This is what is known as a cesium chloride structure. This is known as a cesium chloride structure because historically it was the first crystal x-ray crystal structure that was successfully calculated. And so this arrangement is known as a cesium chloride structure. In this arrangement, we simply have a simple cube of anions and interlocked within it, occupying the holes in the center of the cube, the cations also in a simple cubic structure. Each of the cations has eight anions around it as its nearest neighbors, and each of the anions has eight cations around it as its nearest neighbors. In the body-centered cube, the one in the middle forced the corners apart. And so the packing is not as efficient as in the closest packed array, because the one in the center, like we said, is pushing the corners apart. But when we're talking about cations and anions, they're not going to have the same radius. We're not going to get spheres of identical size. And so what happens in that case? In the case of the ions, the cation is usually smaller than the anion. And what we see happen is, is the anions form the simple cube and the cation takes the point in the center. Now, as long as the cation is large enough, it will manage to keep all the corners away from each other, and the anions won't actually be contacting each other. 
But if the cation is too small, then all those corner ions are going to be running into each other, and that's not going to be a favorable arrangement. They want to be in contact with the cation, but they don't want to be in contact with the other anions. So how big does that ion in the center have to be to hold the corners of this simple cube apart? This is a fairly simple calculation. The cube of the larger ions means each of the edges is 2r of that larger ion in size. The long diagonal through the center of that cube, of course, is therefore 2 square root of 3r, whatever that diameter is, which gives us 3.464r of the large ion. 3.464 minus 2r, the radius of the ones at the corners, leaves us 1.464r as the diameter of the inner sphere. And so what we find out is that the, the smaller ion has to be at least 73% the size of the larger ion to fit into that hole and keep the corners apart. If it's smaller than that, it will not fill the hole. The corners will be in contact, and that will be unfavorable. So what happens if it's the next, if it's too small? If the cation or the smaller ion isn't large enough to fill the hole in the simple cube, then it has to drop down to a smaller hole. The next smaller hole is formed by the two triangles on each successive layer, forming an octahedral. A plane of four, one above, one below. In the center there is an octahedral hole. So how big is the octahedral hole? Well, once again, it's a fairly simple calculation. Again, it is simple to calculate how large that hole has to be. In this case, the four in the plane form a square with edges of 2r. Therefore, the diagonal through that square is 2 times the square root of 2r, so 2.828r of the larger ion, 2.28 r minus 2r leaves us 0.828r. In other words, the smaller ion has to be at least 41% of the larger ion to fit into that hole. So what happens if it's even smaller? If it can't fill the octahedral hole, the next hole down is the tetrahedral hole, formed by three of the spheres in a plane with one sitting above the hole. And in that case, the smaller ion has to be at least 22% the diameter of the larger ion to fill the hole. And if it doesn't even come up to that, then it has to drop into the triangular hole formed by just the three spheres coming together. And that hole is one is 15% the diameter. And if it's smaller than that, then it's just not going to work. And so we can make a simple chart using the radius ratios. If the smaller ion is more than 73% the size of the larger ion, you get a cesium chloride structure. And each of the ions has eight of the opposite ions around it. If the smaller ion is between 41% and 73% of the larger ion, you get what is known as the sodium chloride structure. And the coordination number around each of the ions is six. If the ion is between 22% and 41%, you get what is known as a, C, as a zinc sulfide structure. And the coordination number around each of the ions is 4. And finally, if it falls underneath the 22%, it falls into a triangular hole, and the coordination number becomes just 3. And that brings us to the end of today's lecture on radius ratio for ionic compounds. In the next lecture, we'll look at the actual crystal structures we get from those different ratios. Have a nice day.